Okay, I wanted to start out the video by saying I am not an appliance repair person. So, if you follow these instructions, you're on your own. Uh, this is what I did to fix this particular unit. I did some research on YouTube and other sources on the internet and 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 I followed through and uh, managed to get this one up and running and fixed. Um, when I started the project I did not know if I'd be able to fix it or not and everything turned out okay in the end so uh, good luck on yours. Okay today on the floor of the workbench we got a little wine chiller refrigerator that's not working. Uh, it lights up and says it's running but the fan never really the, the air compressor never really the, or the coolant compressor never really runs so um, we're gonna attempt to uh, to see what's wrong with it. The controls all seem to work okay, so must just be a bad capacitor on the motor. We'll uh, get right to that. All right, let me bring you over here. So when we got in here, we got a little coil of, of uh, stuff. There's a fan back in the bottom there. I'm not sure you can see on video. Looks like there's some sort of relay thing here. And then this thing is really hot. And I haven't been running that very very long, so I have a pro I have a sneaking suspicion that that's it. We'll uh get in there and uh try and get that out. Uh it's a big black pot or something with the uh the um pipes of uh coolant flowing into them, so um most likely. Okay, I gotta turn around here. Butt towards the camera. There's a condensation hose that dumps into this little tray that sits on top of this compressor. And that's how it just evaporates the condensation. Take that off of there. That baby's pretty hot. So let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with her. Got here is the power cord coming in. And a ground lug going to ground. Then it's got the neutral and the hot coming over here. And the neutral gets split couple different ways and the hot just seems to be spliced and those go into here and then one neutral goes this way to to this connector that goes to the to the motor to the compressor motor it's also got a neutral coming out it goes back this way here to this little fan back here little little computer fan back there the other neutral goes this way and and this wire goes to the um, power supply and lamp ballast that lights the uh, lamp inside power uh, it's gonna power the electronics because it's a little power supply back there it's also got a, a ballast on it, so it's going to light the lamp. The black, the hot, goes to that power supply, which makes sense because it would be turning it, it the rest of it on and off. So that comes back on the brown wire here. And the brown wire comes over to the thermal couple. So that if it overheats, this pops and doesn't allow power to flow to the to the compressor motor. So and that's just got a little jumper wire over here to the compressor motor connector. And the third connector to the compressor motor is not hooked up. There is, however, a ground wire coming off the compressor motor that also went to ground. 
And that brown wire splits and runs back to the fan too. So whenever the compressor is on, the little fan should be on as well. I don't see either the compressor or the fan going, but um, we will uh, hook up these ground wires back. We'll hook these ground wires back up and uh, power it up and see if I can actually see this fan spinning. Okay, there's the display showing stop. There we go, now it's running. Let's go back here. And we got a problem. Fan's not running. Oh, but we got 122 volts at the compressor. Why is the fan not running, I wonder? So, that's kind of interesting. I guess jam my meter in across the leads there to see uh, see if we are going to get power to the motor, and we do, but that fan is in parallel with the motor, so it should be spinning, and it's not. So that's one problem. Okay, we're back. And here I got my uh, meter leads across the fan. I cut the heat shrink off the uh, connections to the fan. And I got my meter leads across there. And we're reading 122 volts. So that means that fan is definitely toast, because it is not spinning. Okay, I've been doing a little research and I figured out there's one more thing I need to check. That is I need to check continuity um, on these pins of the compressor to ground. So let's see if we can get her to beep. Or not beep. For not beep. That one's okay. That one's okay, and that one's okay. So that would seem to imply that the compressor is okay. So that means that maybe this thing's wrong. This thing's burnt up. refrigerator. I got the uh, Supco 3-in-1 start, solid state relay overload start capacitor combination. Um, this is going to replace the uh, this little doohickey and the I think the thermal switch that I don't have out yet. So, uh, that should fix the refrigerator. The other issue with the refrigerator was the fan, so I got this nice uh, metal muffin fan with ball bearings, so it will last for a good long time. Pretty nice, came with screws and finger guards that I may or may not use, and a uh, nice little power cord. So I think this will be very quiet and, uh, and do the job. Dual ball bearing, impedance protected baby all right it's very quiet too so I should probably plug it in and see how quiet it is it makes a little noise but it's pretty quiet rotation airflow rotation so I gotta get it in like that you can see this one there's a lot of play in it and it's also not working you see how quickly it spins down 
compared to this one. Let's do a side by side comparison here. See this one stopped already and this one's going to go for quite a while longer. So this is a much better fan, much, going to be much improved the uh, cooling of the system. see the spin fan spinning now when I turn it on so that problem's fixed next problem will be the compressor start problem
Okay, I found a little self-tapping screw. It's got like a little drill bit point on the end. And then uh, I have a quarter inch driver for it. Go direct my drill. And we'll just drill that puppy in there so she's not rattling around. Got a little bit of a rattle there. I'm gonna put some double stick tape or something in there if I have some. Don't have any double stick, but I got some Velcro here. I'm gonna use that'll work the same. Absorb the vibrations. It's liquid tape. I'm just gonna put it around these terminals. Uh, probably after I put them on, I might have to flip this thing over on its side a little bit and try to zoom you in here. All right. These are the wires coming off the new part. And these are the pins. And it shows you here that common is black on the top here. Start is white over here on the on the left. And then uh, run is red over here on the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on. And they just push on. It was uh, red. thing I don't really like is everything's kind of tight in here and close. I'll let that dry. Alright, that's all dry and looks a lot better. Feel a lot better about that. unit I got actually had a two-piece this is the relay and this is the thermal start so I actually did a, actually had a two-piece thing and most of the time these come in one piece so this was a little confusing for me so if you run into this same kind of configuration here um, where it's got a hot coming into here and then this going to the to the motor in fact, they went to the common on the motor, which is even a little odder. But anyways, uh, there you go. Let's turn this over and uh, see if she'll fire up. Fans running. Compressor's running. I think we got a wiener. Let's clean up a little bit here. I gotta shrink my heat shrink and uh, do a few other little nit noids. But I think we got a winner. Thank you.
here. Uh, as you see this has got a sleeve bearing and not ball bearings. So uh, ball bearings are going to last longer but they're slightly noisier. Um, don't know what the DB rating of this is um, but it's you know 110 volt fan. <laughs> just the right size that I need uh, for to line my uh, my coils on my antique radio. Next is take apart this little bad boy. So this little this little wire here heats up and then we heat up this metal piece here and make it spring back and forth and then it would make contact to this contact over here to the center contact or not. And it would just sit there and do that the whole time. This is a lot of times built into this piece so you don't really see this. It's They, they kind of have like a round shape on the side profile because this piece is actually built into it. Um, but this one happened, it happened to be separate so I probably could have just replaced that if I could have found one. Um, but it was cheaper and easier just to put the whole new uh, kit of everything in. never seen anything like this. There's a little disc down in there. Very interesting. It's on some contacts to feed the motor. Huh. wonder what in the world that thing is. Looks like just a little disc of metal. Nine ohms. 
5 ohms. It's interesting. I don't know if it's a resistor or what it is. Whack a doodle. Okay. Uh, it's, I've been editing vi the video and uh, and the refrigerator has been running for quite a long time uh, while I was editing. Uh, th three hours or so. Um, so let's see how cold it is. Um, it's not currently running, it's stopped. Um, it's leveled out at 50 degrees according to the display here. And it is definitely cold inside. And the beers are definitely cold. So she's a working.